Hey YouTube, my name is Tariq, and in this video we'll be going over your camera settings and some of the fundamentals of videography. We'll be covering everything from resolution, frame rate, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and even white balance. The goal by the end of this video is that you'll be able to turn your auto settings to manual and start making some educated and intentional choices when you're out in the field. Let's get started. So first things first, let's talk about resolution. Basically resolution is a fancy word for your video file size. The two most common settings that you'll be cycling through on modern day cameras are 4K and 1080p. Out of the two options, 4K is a larger one and is going to give you a little bit more flexibility in things like color and cropping because it has more information and is a larger file size. If your camera has 4K, I recommend using it, especially if you think your computer will be able to handle it. That said, nowadays even smartphones have 4K. But don't worry if you don't have 4K on your camera. 1080p is still a very good option. So if you're using a DSLR or mirrorless camera or even a smartphone, dive into your settings and see what resolution options you have available. The first thing that you'll notice is that you probably have a couple of different options for each of your resolutions. For example, you wouldn't just choose 1080p. You'll probably see a couple of options like 1080p 24fps or 1080p 30fps or even 1080p 60fps. These additional numbers next to your resolution represent your frame rate. And frame rate, or frames per second, is how many individual frames there are in a single second of video footage. Now why does all this matter? Well, it's really going to change the pace and flow of your video footage, as well as changing how your footage will react. For example, 24fps is the cinematic standard for video footage. 30fps a lot of times is going to be used in things like news broadcasts and soap operas. For YouTubers, and content creators, 60 FPS is very frequently used to slow things down. And anything higher than 60, like 120 or 240 FPS, is used for slow motion as well. When creating any video, at some point in the beginning, you have to create your project file, and the first settings that you're going to choose are your resolution and your frame rate. I would recommend choosing a 24 FPS timeline because it's going to give you a very cinematic look. So if we're working with a 24 FPS timeline, when we bring in footage that was shot in 24 FPS, then it's going to look very natural and play out at a normal speed. However, if we bring in footage that was shot in something like 60 FPS onto our 24 FPS timeline, we can technically convert the footage to 24 FPS by reducing its speed down to 40%. On the screen now is the simple equation you can use whenever you need to determine the percentage on your own. And what you'll see is that the 60 FPS footage has now been stretched out and slowed down. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of frame rates and how to select them properly. I would just recommend basing everything off of 24 FPS so that when you shoot 24 FPS, you know it's normal speed. And when you shoot something like 60 FPS, you know it's going to be slowed down. Now that we understand resolution and frame rate, it's time to talk about how to expose our footage properly. When it comes to exposure, there are three basic settings involved. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. All of these camera settings will affect the overall brightness of the image as well as their own individual unique elements. Exposure is really a balancing act of all three. Let's talk about each one and how you can get the best results from your camera. Okay, so once you've selected your frame rate like we talked about earlier, the next thing you'll want to adjust is your shutter speed. Shutter speed is responsible for the motion that we see frame to frame in our footage. The main rule to know here is that your shutter speed should be double your frame rate, aka the 180 degree rule. This rule is a standard in videography because because it explains the relationship between frame rates and shutter speed when recording video. The idea behind it is to mimic motion the same way that the human eye experiences it in real life. So if your frame rate is 24 FPS, then your shutter speed should be 1 over 50, since I've never seen 1 over 48 as a shutter speed option. Likewise, if your frame rate is 60 FPS, then your shutter speed should be 1 over 120. Just do a little bit of basic multiplication and round up if need be. So what happens if we go above or below the setting? Well, if we go below this setting, like a shutter speed of 1 over 4, for example, then the footage will start to look very abstract and blurry. If we are above this setting, like a shutter speed of 1 over 250, for example, then our footage will start to look very jittery and intense. So to recap, just try to leave your shutter speed at double your frame rate, because it's going to give you the most natural looking flow to your footage. Now let's talk about aperture. Aperture is one of those camera settings that a lot of people get intimidated by, but it's actually pretty simple. Just like all the other camera settings, aperture will affect all of the brightness and darkness of your footage. However, it will also affect the depth. 
A lot of people really like that look where the background is out of focus and blurry and their subject is really sharp and crisp. This is called bokeh and it's a very dreamy look that's achieved by your lens aperture and focal length. Different lenses will have different apertures and they'll give you different results. Fun fact, when you're adjusting the aperture in your camera, it's actually not changing anything within the camera. It's only affecting your lens. Basically what's happening is that the iris of the lens is opening and closing to let more or less light in, while also creating more or less depth. Basically what happens here is the lower the numbers, such as f2.8, f1.8, or f1.4, the more and more depth and the brighter your footage is going to be. While the opposite takes place, the higher the numbers are, like f8, f16 or f20 and in turn the darker and more in focus your footage will be. I think that this is best demonstrated by putting a camera on a tripod and focusing on a subject. Then slowly adjust your aperture from the lowest number to the highest number and watch the blurry background become more in focus as the footage gets darker at the same time. To recap your footage will be brighter and have more depth the lower the aperture number is and your footage will be darker and more in focus the higher the aperture number is. Now for the last of the three basic camera settings. Let's talk about ISO. Like the last two camera settings, this will affect the overall brightness of your footage, but there is a caveat. When you turn your ISO value up, the brighter your footage will get. However, it will also become noisier and grainier. You can think of this a little bit like audio levels. I don't know if you've ever seen them before, but if you've been editing a project and you turn up your audio too loud, usually there will be a green that turns to yellow, then to a red indicator. That's basically telling you that your audio is beginning to distort as it reaches those higher red levels. ISO is a little bit like this because if you turn it up too high, you'll begin to distort your footage a little bit by introducing noise and other artifacts. So the goal here is to keep your ISO as low as you can. This will result in the most clear and cleanest looking footage that you can get. That's why I like to leave the ISO setting to the end, so that when I intentionally choose my frame rate, shutter speed, and aperture, I can then finally dial in my ISO and ensure that I don't jack it up too high for properly exposed footage. Now, last but not least, let's talk about white balance. White balance is essentially correcting the overall color of your image so that your whites and neutral colors look natural. A lot of times by default, cameras will have their white balance set to auto. And I'll be honest, I'm horrible at changing my white balance. Balance, although I do understand its importance because leaving it set to auto the entire time can introduce problems because if you're recording for a longer period of time next to a window or something similar you may have noticed your color just randomly changes like in this example on the screen now taken from the same video as the Sun goes behind a cloud or other similar variable changes your white balance may be adjusting in ways that you actually don't want so I want to show you that you can manually change your white balance so that you can dial in the look that you want modern-day cameras have a ton of different white balance presets such as daylight or cloudy or tungsten or fluorescent. Most cameras actually have the ability to set a custom value for your white balance. This custom value is a term called Kelvin. If you've ever been light bulb shopping before, you've probably seen a number on these light bulbs such as 3200 Kelvin or 4600 Kelvin. Well, this is actually indicating the warmth or coolness of the light. Likewise, your camera can actually adjust by choosing a manual Kelvin option. If you're shooting in daylight, for example, the Kelvin value value of that is 5600 Kelvin. So you can actually choose your setting to be 5600 Kelvin and everything that is white will appear white. If that's off, then things that are white may appear very orange or very blue. So in any shooting situation, you should go to your manual Kelvin options and scroll through until you get your footage to look the most natural. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing, guys. That's going to wrap up this basic camera settings and video fundamentals tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found some value from it. For you auto shooters, hopefully you can start shooting in manual mode now that you know your stuff. That said, for more videography tutorials, hop over to this playlist next and choose a video that you're interested in to continue growing your knowledge. And as always, trust your creative process. I'll see you in the next one. Cut.